So today on Monswick Garage, we're gonna go ahead and build that DIY run stand that you've seen in a couple of my engine videos. I've got the whole thing broken down, all the parts inventoried, and all the pertinent measurements taken because a few of you have asked about how I built it. And down in the description, there should be a PDF that's got a list of all this stuff and step-by-step -step instructions that you can follow along with. Let's get started. So the tools you're gonna to need to do this is gonna depend entirely on what hardware you pick up. I'll be putting everything together with my impact. You could use a drill if you want. I'm using my half inch because the quarter inch's battery's dead and on the charger. These five and a half inch structural wood screws take a T27 Torx bit. The inch and a half lag bolts take a half inch socket. My three inch decking screws take a T25 Torx bit. So for the first stage of this, we're gonna want our 260 inch four by fours and five of our 28 inch two by fours. I'm gonna take out and lay one two by four on each end. I'm gonna measure across. So I want my four by fours to be 28 inches. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and drive in one of my three inch screws on each side. Only driving one screw in. Well, let me shift these back and forth so that I can measure from corner to corner and make sure that it's square. So before I measure, I can take a carpenter's square and get a general idea just by doing this. And I can already see it's off a bit. Okay, that was too much. Square on that end, square on that end. So now we'll go from corner. 66 and a quarter, we're at 66 and three eighths. So it's only an eighth of an inch off. It's fine, it's not just good, it's good enough. There we go, I want them about flush. Next up, I'm gonna take a second two by four on the end here. Go ahead and drive both three inch screws. And do the same on the other end. Now our fifth board here, measure each 17 inches, go ahead and cut a line. These are already here because, well, I already built it. Once you got your lines drawn, line up your board with those lines. Find where you stashed your fastening device. Go ahead and drive in your last four screws. Knees help hold things in place. Now that we've got our braces in, it's actually gonna be the bottom side of our stand. So it's time for casters. What you decide to use for casters is entirely up to you. I went with two fixed and two swivel casters. I chose to put my fixed casters at the rear and my swivel casters up here at the front. Now the bulk of the weight of the engine is gonna rest across the top side of this brace here. I found it easier when maneuvering this thing around to have the swivel parts up under the weight portion of it. So I'm trying to take the axle of the caster and line it up right in between the two two by fours and then also have the whole caster itself centered on the four by four that's underneath. For my measuring device, I'm just using the old Mark One Mod Zero eyeball. I have to say, if I were to do this again, I would probably do swivel casters with the little locking tabs on the front and the back. And this is where our inch and a half lag bolts come in. I'm gonna take and drive in just in the corners here. Don't wanna drive that all the way down until I get them the other corner started. There we go. There we go. One swivel caster. Now I'm gonna do the other three and we'll move on. Now with our casters on, we can go ahead and flip this over. <sighs> nice. Nice and smooth. So our last 28 inch two by four, it's gonna go right up here up front. It's gonna go in with three inch screws. Now that we've got the bottom supports in, as well as the first top support, it's time to measure out for the second and third. Just like with this bottom support here, we're gonna take a measurement right at 17 inches, and you're gonna draw a line. You can do that on both sides. We're not gonna put this one on yet though. You're gonna take and draw a second line 
at 32 and one half inches. And this is where your first four by four is gonna go into place. Now I use five and a half inch structural screws for this. Before we get this guy put in place, we actually have to measure for where our engine mounts are gonna set. And our lines are gonna be five and one sixteenths of an inch from the end. So here to here. Now that we've got a decent idea of where that is gonna be, we have to attach these. So to attach these, I'm gonna go ahead and use my five and a half inch wood screws. I don't have a clamp big enough to hold this in place, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to wing it. I'm sure you have a better way to do this. If you do, let me know down in the comments. And when I did this initially, I did drill starter holes to minimize the amount of wood splittage. Failing. All right, one down, nice and sturdy. Now we do the other side. All right, motor mounts are set. Now we can go ahead and put the cross brace on. We're gonna line up the leading edge of our four by four, this being the front, that being the back. So our front edge of the four by four is gonna line up with our 17 inch mark. There we go. Line both those up. We'll go ahead and drive in our last four five and a half inch wood screws. <laughs> So lastly, we want to cut them up, we'll call it nine and a half inches. Nine and three quarters. Ew, stop. I just want to make a mark. So we we'll just want to come up and make a mark nine and three quarters inches from the bottom of the support two by four. Draw your line on both sides. I'm an idiot. Yeah. That's eight and three quarters, not nine and three quarters. I was like, that's not working. There we go. And when you're doing this, don't be me. I put this cross member here just to help these support the weight of the engine, keep from splaying out, because just because they're angled here. I did not talk about these angles. Uh, this is a 40 degree angle. This is actually meant to be used in conjunction with your motor mount brackets. And that's the base. Uh, you can actually get a, an engine on this at this point with the addition of one smaller piece of four by four as well as a piece of two by four just to kind of make things sit level. The rest of our wood pieces here, this is for our rad support and our control panel, which is, uh, <laughs> it's cheap, but you know what? It works. I originally built this, I built this for my 273. And with the stock fan on it, I realized I needed a little bit more space between the fan and the radiator. So I cut up a couple of pieces of two by four by six and a half, went ahead and attached them to the front here as a spacer. Now with our spacers in place, I can go ahead and put the radiator supports on. Don't failing. Now I'm starting these with one screw again. So that'll allow me to adjust the distance on the top. For now, it's fine. So to get these even, I'll go ahead and measure from outside to outside on the bottom. I'm at 28 and an eighth. And do the same from top to top and adjust until I am at 28 and one eighth. This is where our little uh, one by seven and a quarter comes in. I don't know, it's a weird measurement. It was a fence board. Just to give this thing a little extra support, because triangles are strong, we'll go ahead and set up our brace. Very nice. And we can't forget the other side. That ain't going nowhere. Undoubtedly, you're gonna want some kind of control mechanism. Again, how you set this up is entirely up to you. What I did is I took the leftover pieces from cutting these 45 degree angles, and I mounted them into this shelf here. I actually used three, but this one broke when I was taking it apart, so yeah, well, I can still show you how it was set up. For controls, 
I just took this piece of scrap metal that I had laying around and I drove a screw in here and a screw in here just to hold this in place. I drilled a couple holes in it and I used that to mount both a toggle switch for my 12 volt power and a push button to actuate my starter. The last thing I put on here was a three gauge pod so that I could have my water temperature, my oil pressure, and my tachometer. The last two bits that I've left around here are these two leftover pieces of four x four. I just stack them back here and those are the support for the transmission when the transmission's on. And that my friends is my DIY engine run stand built from old fencing material that's sitting out behind my outbuilding. If you've got any more questions about this thing, feel free to hit me up down in the comments. And if you wanna see more information about the controls and the wiring setup for this thing, check out this video right here. Peace out, homies.